Hello and welcome to the March update for 2017. There's a bit of progress on the east end of the layout, round about the retaining walls and the incline that I'll share with you and I'll also outline some of my plans for the next couple of months and also I'll throw in some BR Blue running shots for you today. So I hope you enjoy. Any questions as always please get in touch. Cheers! Here's phase two of the retaining wall, uh, obviously phase one being the original section which is here. I've stepped this out and it comes all the way along and it meets the buttress from the arch. Now the main reason for doing that was the upper baseboard curves in and it was getting in the way. So if I'd continued it flush with the, the first section of the wall, it would have to have ended about here at the signal and then stepped out anyway. So I thought I'll just, you know, while I'm at it, get a bit more variation there and it seems to have worked quite well. The curve, a uh, southeastern fine cast plastic card, and I've got the two buttresses there. And if I can I get closer, you'll see that the buttresses are flush with the angle of the the other walls, i.e., there's no gap here at the side. I've angled the side of the the buttresses on each side to cater for this angle. And I always had to plan that in when I was doing the original plans for the, the tunnel area because the tunnel's not square on, it's at an angle. So we're working with angles here to try and get it all just to look right, like it's being cut into the, the embankment, if you like, of the upper upper section. And I've got this little step out here, which I talked about in one of the last um, previous videos about you know which one looked best. And I've gone for the step out and there's a buttress just tacked in place here. Um, to continue the wall along towards the the other raised section. The height of these walls is 113 millimetres and the height of the upper baseboard is 95 millimetres. Okay, so that's the size that I kind of work with. As I continue round, here's the, the curved retaining wall that I've just kind of glued the brickwork to today. Made up the same process I made the last one with You've got um, two millimetres MDF glued to formers under kind of pressure with epoxy resin and supports at the back. I'll take it out later, but you've seen the other ones. It's the same construction. And I've got buttresses just tacked in place here. And I've cut it down from 113 to 86 to take it under the new raised section. So if what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around and I'll, I'll remove that upper raised section if I can without too much disruption. Just kind of slide out a bit and up. And if I take that away you'll see the curved wall now. And you'll see how I've, I've cut it down. And this is flush with the MDF former at the back. Alright, so that takes it under the tunnel, or the, the raised section, and it ends where there's going to be a where the wooden leg is, the wooden square section for the, the edge of the raised section which will be brickwork so you'll not see the edge here, that will be set back so it's all kind of hidden, the, edge, the bare edges are hidden and this will get the same detailed treatment as the last of the you know the previous sections of retaining a wall and I'll do a similar design at this side albeit smaller but that will be my last curved wall in this area Okay, if I take you up here, you'll kind of see the angles I'm working at. You see the two ply formers there just at the back of the tunnel entrance, they will be glued in place to support it. And again, I showed you my previous videos, they've also been angled. And there's the angle from you know, showing the wall jutting out. I'll fill that area there with ply and MDF, just like I've patched up with the, 
the other parts as you can see there I've had to patch up with MDF for the slight gap I'll do the same there so it'll be hidden and blended in and that's the next week's job and then it's a case of working on the girder area priming and painting the brick and then moving on to the next bit Okay, now I've got to the stage where I'm needing to apply plaster cloth to the top of the, the foam terrain that I've shaped and, and filed down. And what I'm using is Woodland Scenics Plaster Cloth Triple Roll. And this apparently gives you um, 30 square feet of coverage. Okay, and there's full instructions on the back there. I'll take you through how to do it. It's not rocket science. Um, you know, it's fairly simple to do, but messy, hence I've got the sheets down. some plaster cloth now what I've done is I've cut it into workable sized pieces now there's two sides to this there's the the kind of rough side and there's a smoother side it's the rough side that you've got to have facing up once you've wa uh, watered it or run it through a basin of water as I'm doing so I'll just run it through the basin just give it a passing drip and then place it on where you want you can drag it crease it uncrease it and then just kind of press it so that the plaster kind of smooths out all the holes. You don't want to just leave it on with the, a lot of holes shown because it will not bind as well. So you've got to kind of kind of seal it. So, got another piece. And then just kind of try and overlap it where you want it. And put a couple of layers on, don't just put one on. Um, you know, give it, a, give it a couple of minutes to kind of just settle and then go over it again and press any imperfections, you know, in the foam underneath. You can blend them in. So a piece up here, you just press it in, smooth it out. And you work your way all along, and it pretty goes. Um, off in about you know 20 minutes it start to that was 20 minutes ago and it started to go off so it's uh, quite quite good quite good uh, to work with so that's it plus our clothing. plaster cloth done now and it's just it's just hardening up. I put two or three layers on each bit just to give it that strong um, shell where I could put uh, scenic material and paint on. Okay so that's just hardening just now if I pan round all the way up there both sides. Remember there's a retaining wall on the right hand side which I've taken out just now to avoid it getting covered in plaster and then we come to this bit here which climbs up to the top of the the incline all the way along and it just tapers down the corner I'll let this dry and then I'll coat it in some earth colours and then I'll leave it and I'll be turning my attention to the ballasting 
and weathering of the track and then scenic material and whatnot. Okay, another thing that I've been doing is painting the plaster cloth ready for obviously the um, the grass, the static grass, the, the bushes and whatnot to go on top. Initially what I did was I had to get four or five days just to kind of really harden before I, before I painted it. But initially I put on this um, Woodland Scenics Earth Colours liquid pigment and it was an earth colour. Um, and I, I felt that uh, it was a bit, a bit uh, light. Um, you can probably see there, also it didn't give a very thorough coverage, I even put two coats on and it still it didn't, you know, you could still see the plaster cloth coming through. Now, the last thing you want when you put your static grass and your, you know, your scatters down is to see white uh, plaster cloth shining through, that would just be a, a total no-no. So I was going to just put a couple of coats of this on, but, you know, it's not cheap, it's I think £9 or something, a, a tub. And I was kind of three quarters of the way through there, having done all of uh, the sections twice, and I still wasn't too happy with it. So what I turned to was my, my green scenes, textured paint and yard filth. And uh, that's four, four pound forty five, and a whole tub, if you like, of 125 millilitres did the whole section. You can see all the way down there. Now this gives a nice dark earth, rich earth colour. Also it's very thick because of its texture. It's like got a kind of pasty sand in it and uh, you know it does give a nice texture like earth. So any bare bit shining through will, see this here you've got a bit of texture there, will um, you know be, be more realistic. Okay so I've got in the recesses there and stuff like uh, you know clumps of mud and, and boulders within the, the earth. So that continues all the way up. And I've brought it in as close as I can to the, the track, so when I do ballast I can then go straight into the, the undergrowth without having to touch up a line of paint to get rid of any cork showing and, and whatnot. Okay, that was all done neatly there by putting paper down in between the, the, the backboard and the, the plaster cloth and then when it was dry just pulling it out and that's how I've not got any paint on the the back seat, which obviously I don't want because I'm going to fit a self-adhesive back seat at that um, ply at some point in time once it's all painted. Okay, so that's gone all the way down to the other end. Now what you've got here is still the white plaster cloth and I'll explain what I've been doing here. Initially I was just going to slide this wall in but when I did I noticed that it was sitting um, slightly angled outwards. It wasn't, you know, it was sitting kind of angled like that. It wasn't sitting vertical. So I had to kind of hack bits out of there. As you can see the gap now. And also down the bottom here. Okay, so it's not as, as neat and clean cut as it was. I've had to kind of do a bit of surgery. But now if I push it back, that's perfectly vertical. So what I have to do is I have to fill this gap here. And what I'll do is I'll get bits of foam, pack it in, and then once the wall is in place and painted and weathered and mortared a uh, brick course put in then I'll just you know smear some of the plaster cloth or I've got um, shaper sheet plaster that uh, you know sets hard and um, quickly and that will just patch it in and then obviously I'll just patch up the top of the wall bits there and uh, reapply some plaster, plaster cloth and stuff like that to just blend it in with the top of the wall. Okay, maybe you've got a, a tile, a ridge tile if you like, you know, capping stones going on the top there. 
Okay, so a wee bit of work to be done just to kind of blend that in. Again, bushes and whatnot will hide it all. Final part for this, I'll show you the tunnel mouth. And uh, I neatened this up with the shaper sheet plaster, which honestly is set, and it makes it too thick. And it's set basically on my knife. It was so quick, but when you put that in there now, you see there's no unsightly gaps. I'll do it on the other side. Again, no unsightly gaps, and that'll let the, the terrain blend in nicely with the, the walls. How I did that was I took these and I just wrapped cling film over them, and I put them in place and I smeared the plaster with a palette knife and my fingers uh, in, into the gaps, and then quickly took that away. And you know, that's how I got the, the nice clean edge, it was, it was almost dry on impact. All right, so really. Once I've got this wall bit sorted here, I'll be painting that and then I'll continue the ballasting on the on the lower and the incline, this bit here, and then it's down to uh, weathering the track. And then we're starting to think about scenic material, obviously I've got to get the brickwork done here as well. It's taking shape but uh, not quickly, but I'm hoping to do it right first time, so I'm not going to rush things. Okay, this corner, um, I've kind of narrowed it down to two options now. One is the country bungalow that's getting built, and um, you know, obviously I'd have workmen, a porter cabin, cement mixer, vans, tradesmen, etc., around about it, putting it up. It's not sitting at the proper angle, I'll just put it there just now to show you. As you can see, there's not as much space as, uh, as I initially thought for putting more than one down there. Obviously, this would be maybe uh, an acre of land or whatever that's been sold for you know a country private residence and um, you know they've bought the land and a nice big garden and stuff like that so that's option option one that I've narrowed down I thought about a castle but you know that's a lot of work and uh, it wouldn't really fit in with the, the the end of the layout maybe the other end of the layout near the Waverley Gardens that I'm doing but uh, not in this corner so that's option one Okay, this is option two, and it's the Camp Stroke Caravan Park. And I've got one static caravan sitting there just now. This is the Backman, I think it's 44 131, and they're like hen's teeth to get a hold of. If you've got one of these and you're not using it on your layout, and it's maybe sitting in a box or whatever, eh, give us a shout. And if I go down this option, we can, eh, we can talk. Okay, um,. I was going to add some tents as well, maybe a couple of tow caravans. There's a, there's a backman, they've got an older style static caravan on the market just now, a kind of green and white one. That would look okay next to this. You know, it is the 80s, so maybe that was a 1960s caravan. It would still be there in the 1980s. So I'd get away with using that. Plus they've also got a tow caravan out just now. I can buy a couple of them, maybe, you know, change the colours of them slightly. And um, scale model scenery, um, they do had the caravan card kits however I was kind of looking at their camping site you know with the tents uh, pack to add in here as well so it's all dependent on getting the static caravans and the caravans and I could always have areas where the caravan has got you know, a gravel area around about it where the car could sit with the uh, access paths um, you know fire buckets on posts like you would have in a caravan park um, fire points you know if there's a fire you'll kind of meet there and maybe a shower stroke toilet block so there is options 
um, in this small space for quite a lot to go on. So this is option two. As you can see, the wall is now complete and it's in position and all the details and ledges are added to match in with the existing retaining wall. The tunnel entrance is recessed in to the, the wall to give it more depth and a more realistic look. And if you follow the wall round to the right, you'll see the girder bridge starting to take shape. Now if I move the camera around and show you what I'm working on just now. I've got a central pillar there, okay, that I've made out of just a a plastic card and then I've obviously lined it with the brickwork and put the ledge around the bottom again to match the rest of the, the retaining wall and at the far corner there I've also got the the, um, the support block it doesn't go all the way in it goes in about 60 millimeters as you can see there if I zoom in in the dark bit in the tunnel it is actually lined the wall is lined right the way around with the curve um, at both sides and I'll maybe take the camera on the other side and show you in a minute this has just been kind of mocked up just now, it's not glued in place. So I take them off there, the, the parapet walls. Okay. And then I take the... Obviously I'm going to have a, a support at this side as well. But this obviously is a single entrance, that being a double. I thought to have a three span track that length without support in the middle was a wee bit unrealistic. So I've kind of di divided it up with a big central pillar there for support. If I take that off, that's just a Wills uh, Vary Girder kit. Okay. That was a, almost a complete kit to do one, so obviously I've got another kit to do the other side. That's not been painted or primed yet, but if you look at one of my previous videos, I showed you how to paint and weather that a long time ago. Uh, take this out here. The This doesn't go to the full height of the, the ply, okay? That's how I made it up. It's just a, a kind of frame, if you like, a shell, all right? And I've got these bits going across there just to kind of support it as it was gluing. And then I lined it in the brick. Okay, so that needs painted up now. The ledges sit on top and they've been made up from one and a half and one millimeter plastic card and to give it that kind of ledge look. You can maybe see the two layers there. And again, that's mimicked on this one here, which again goes into the, the tunnel. So it's starting to take shape. It's I've kind of got all the brickwork done now. Once I've finished this bit here, uh, all the brickwork will be painted at once, and you know the mortar course will be added all at once, and that'll really be it for retaining walls for this end of the layout. Okay, I'll be moving on to other things on the on the project list. So I'll take you to the other side and I'll show you how that I've lined the tunnel. I've just taken the lid off the tunnel section here to show you inside. To show you what I was actually talking about from the previous clip. You can see that the curve wall continues around here and I've continued the same detail as I have outside with the same size of ledges, same dimensions for the, the buttress eh, there and there and I've also got a smaller section of wall here again detailed in the same way. In here I've even, this is where I've kind of cut in the, the support column being on a curve, it's thinner at this side than it was at that side. I've had to kind of work that out. And it's all been brick lined and ledged. And when it's all weathered up, obviously grimy and, and a lot of um, water, you know, streaks from, from above. It should look the part. I'm going to put another column in here to support this end. The column's kind of recessed in a wee bit from the edge of the tunnel because this is quite an, you know, in comparison to the other side, this is narrower, so I'll get away with a single span. Um, girder on there and I'll just have a support in here just to make it look more realistic as the trains go through. I'm conscious that if I ever get a cam truck, you know, one of the cameras that you put in a truck in and tow it round or push it round the layout, I want, you know, everything to look as um, re realistic as possible even those that the bits that you can't see from day to day. So that's why I'm putting interiors in the tunnels and, you know, on the bridges and all that kind of stuff. So now really all it Leads for me to do is put a bit of grime, um, you know, terrain material here, uh, earth, ballast, muck, even just some of the texture.